Greetings, everyone. P. Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to day 26 of albums that are 30 years old in 2023. That's right, we're going back 30 years to 1993. We've got 31 days here in March. We have picked out together our 31 favorite albums that came out 30 years ago, celebrating their 30th birthdays or their 30th anniversaries, however you like to look at it. Today, we're going to take a look at a very cool double album, two disc set. It came out on November 22nd, 1993 in the UK. This was only available as an import here in the States till roughly the year 2000. Then it, then it was released here officially. But in the UK, readily available on November 22nd. Uh, this is uh, sort of a compilation that was released on Chrysalis Records, produced by Ian Anderson. I'm talking about the Nightcap. The Unreleased Masters, 1973 to 1991, from Jethro Tull. That's right. So I remember when I saw this sitting in my favorite music shop. I don't even remember, honestly, where did I buy this? I believe in 1993. So where did I get this? I don't even remember. Don't remember where I bought this. Didn't buy it in New York City because I wasn't working in New York City at the time. I don't know. Don't know where I got this. But I remember seeing this and thinking, oh, because I'm a huge Tull fan, got to have this. And basically what this is, is a collection of unreleased stuff from throughout their career, but specifically from, like I said, 1973 all the way to 1991. <clears throat> you get <clears throat> on disc one, <clears throat> excuse me, which is called My Round. Disc one is My Round. Disc two is Your Round. And it's got the whole bottle of, bottle of booze, right? Now it's empty. Anyway. Uh, the first disc is called the Chateau Disaster Tapes. Pretty legendary in Jethro Tull circles uh, when the band went into the studio at the uh, Chateau de Hauerville, or however they say that, right? To record what was to be the Passion Play album. They went and recorded a whole bunch of stuff. And Ian and the boys ultimately were very unhappy with the studio, the way the mixes were coming out, just all sorts of problems. And they basically decided to take what they recorded, <clears throat> scrap it, go somewhere else, and record the album fresh again. Very different, I might add, because what, event, what ultimately became the Passion Play album, or a Passion Play, very different from the original recordings, but lots of similarities. So in, the original intent was not to make this one long album of basically all one long track like a passion plate, similar to Thick as a Brick. It actually was comprised of lots of different songs and sections. And what's interesting is if you go back and you listen to the Chateau Disaster tapes, either on here, they had a, on the Jethro Tull 20th anniversary box set, they also had a, uh, a selection of a couple tracks included on that. The new Passion Play box set, which isn't new anymore, it came out like a decade ago. Uh, the uh, anniversary edition has the all the original Passion Play recordings without overdubs. Because here, Ian went back into the studio and added lots of flute passages to the the, the arrangements. The original recording of the album had very little flute. It's very guitar heavy believe there was a little bit of sax here and there, but very little flute. So here, the flute is brought back in, and the sequencing is, is changed a little bit. Uh, I think the sequence in the album works really well on here, on Nightcap. Uh, to me, this becomes a whole other Jethro Tull album. Again, very different from Passion Play, but also very similar. Okay, And uh, there are also elements, passages, arrangements, and bits and pieces of things that later wound up on songs on War Child. So really what you get here on the Chateau Disaster tapes is this whole other album that really is, is when you really look at it, was the blueprint for what later became a passion play and parts of War Child. So you'll listen to this, you'll be like, oh yeah, I recognize that, I recognize that, I recognize that, oh, but that's really cool. And all then it's very heavy. Very heavy, very progressive. Martin Barr's guitar is big, bright in the mix, crunchy all over the place. There's loads of really cool flute on here. I think the, the addition of the flute works really, really well. But uh, you got, you know, first post, uh, Anna Malay, 
Tiger Tune, Look at the Animals, Law of the Bungle. Uh, you got Law of the Bungle Part 2. You got uh, Left Right, Solitaire. For me, the whole back end is just absolutely crushing. Solitaire, Critique, Oblique, Post Law, Scenario, Audition, and No Rehearsal. Those last like four tracks are just like big, heavy. Jethro Tull, some of the heaviest stuff they ever did. So if you want really heavy, aggressive, progressive Jethro Tull, the Chateau Disaster Tapes from Nightcap. It's really, really good. So that's disc one. Worth the price of admission for that alone. Disc two, unreleased and uh, rare tracks. So these are all sorts of non-album tracks that were recorded on sessions from all the albums throughout the 70s, early 80s, and the, ni and the very early 90s. So you get things like, you know, stuff that didn't make it to, <clears throat> you know, um, Minstrel in the Gallery and... Uh, I'm drawing a blank here. Too old to rock and roll, too young to die, and some of the you know the uh, the the folkier albums uh, from the late '70s, uh, as well as Broadsword and the Beast, and you know all that kind of stuff. So you get uh, Paradise Steakhouse, Sea Lion Two, okay, that is left over from War Child. You got Piece of Cake, you got Quartet, Silver River Returning, Crew Nights, which is really cool. I believe Crew Nights was a leftover from Stormwatch, if I remember correctly. Uh, the Curse. Uh, Rosa on the Factory Floor, A Small Cigar. Again, some of these are they're hard rock songs, some are kind of bluesy songs. Uh, Man of Principle, you get some stuff leftovers from the, uh, the, <clears throat> the 80s albums like Crest of a Nave and whatnot. Uh, no Step, Drive on the Young Side of Life, I Don't Want to Be Me, Broadsword Bizarre, very cool song. Lights Out, Truck Stop Runner, and Hardliner. Hardliner is very cool too. So a lot of... Uh, Little hidden gems on disc two there. Not all of it works really, really well. But, you know, what's crazy is you get all of this. And some might say, well, that's a ton of unreleased stuff that didn't make it to the other albums. Well, Jethro Tull's got so much stuff. The actuality is this wasn't even everything. Because as we've seen on all of the anniversary box sets that have come out in recent years from Tull from all these different albums, there's great stuff that was recorded during those album sessions that didn't even make it to here that Ian held on to that now they've put out on the box sets. It's just unbelievable. And and some of these songs are as good as what made the actual albums. So I, I think Jethro Tull and Ian Anderson uh, are like the kings of holding on to unreleased gems that they recorded during album sessions. You know, a lot of you talk about a lot of bands in the history of you know, rock and roll who uh, they went into the studio with the 8, 10 songs they were going to do for that album, and that's what they did. They didn't go in and record 15, 20 songs and then hold on to the other stuff, right? Jethro Tull did that all the time. So it's we've seen this surplus of great stuff from the vaults that have come out in recent years. But this was, when this came out in 93, uh, this was a complete revelation to me. Um, awesome stuff. And uh, so if you haven't heard Nightcap, again, I'm, I'm assuming you can still probably get this, uh, and all you really have are the regular albums, uh, you're missing out on a lot of really great uh, unreleased stuff that uh, came out on this set and in sets following it. So, yeah, lots of cool stuff. So anyway, that's uh, my pick for today, Nightcap from Jethro Tell. Again, featuring all sorts of different uh, lineups throughout the years. Mostly, of course, Ian Anderson on all of it, and Martin Barr's on all of it here too as well, but all sorts of other people. So, uh, and then you, know, you get uh, there's a little booklet included here, which uh, you know, gives you information on when all this stuff came from. So, like uh, Paradise Steakhouse was from 1974, Sea Lion 2, 74, Piece of Cake, 1990. Quartet, 1974, Silver River Returning, 1990, Crew Nights, 81, The Curse, 81, Rose on the Factory Floor, 90, A Small Cigar, 75, Man of Principle, 88, Commons Brawl, 81, No Step, 81, Drive on the Young Side of Life, 81, I Don't Want to Be Me, 90, Broadford Bazaar, 78, Lights Out, 81, Truck Stop Runner, 91, and Hardliner, 1989. So, you know, you can pretty much uh, figure out exactly what albums those were, what sessions those were recorded at, and then they tell you, like, who all the players are. You know, you have the, the whole cast of characters here, and then under each track you get uh, their initials so you know who plays on each one. So, and of course, the, uh, the Chateau Disaster tapes are all from 1973. So, yeah, really, really great stuff. A uh, great, great compilation. One, for me, one of the greatest compilations ever. Um, and it's a compilation of all rare and unreleased stuff. And you can't, you got to love that. If you are a collector and a follower of any of these bands, when you get something like this, you know, shit that you never heard before, you didn't have before, you know, it's like, 
this this is the holy grail stuff. So yeah, Nightcap is my pick for today from Jeff Rotel. If you haven't heard it, go out and listen to it. Let us know what you think if you do have this and you are a fan. Also put that down in the comments below, as well as your pick for day 26 as we march our way towards day 31. Just a few days left. So we're going to finish out the month. We'll uh, give you uh, my last bunch of picks, as well as a full episode of Honorable Mentions. And then we'll move on to those Riff Masters, my favorite 30 Riff Masters of all time. It's all about the guitarist month. Each and every day I'll give you another one of my favorite, my top 30 riff guys, uh, and my three favorite riffs from each one of them. <clears throat> so it's going to be an interesting month. I uh, still haven't put my full list together yet, so working on that. So uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on Facebook, we're on YouTube, all together, all the damn time. It's early. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and click on that notification bell so you get alerted of all of our content as it posts. And please do hit the like button before you leave. So uh, thanks for watching, everybody. I am Pete Pardo. See you real soon here with more stuff. We've got uh, ranking the albums of Billy Squire coming up in just a little bit, so stay tuned for that and lots more. Till then, I am Pete Pardo. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, everybody. Bye bye. <laughs>